63rd pick, the Buffalo Bills select Deion Dawkins. Tackle. The Buffalo Bills select Tredavious White, LSU. Matt Milano, linebacker. Harrison Phillips, Stanford. Ron Neal, safety. Jermaine Edmonds, oh, oh, linebacker. Oh, oh, oh. Aaron Johnson, defensive back. Josh Allen, quarterback, Wyoming. The Buffalo Bills select Cody Ford. Dawson Knox. Devin Singletary, running back. Ed Oliver, Houston. Buffalo Bills select Zach Moss. Running back, A.J. Epinesa. Wide out, Gabriel Davis. With the 93rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Spencer Brown. Tackle, Northern Iowa. Welcome into Bill's Draft Special presented by Highmark, the official health plan of the Buffalo Bills. I'm Maddie Glab. I'm joined by Bill's insider Chris Brown. And we'd like to welcome offensive tackle Spencer Brown to the Buffalo Bills out of northern Iowa. And when I look at this kid, size, size, size. He's almost two feet taller than me. Let's yeah. be honest here. I'm five feet We're going to need to get you a box he if you're going to interview six, him at some point. Eight, 311 <laughs> <Me too>. pounds, <laughs> right? 6'8", 311 pounds. His hands 10 and 1 fourth inch. Got some nice long arms, 34 and 3 quarter inch yeah. arms. And when you turn the tape on and the small tape that I've watched of him, this guy can move for his size. Yeah. You think 6'8", 311, maybe, maybe a little bit slower, but he moves pretty nice and has some agility athleticism to him. What yeah, do you think he about was, this pick? He was uh, like a five-sport athlete at his very small high school, which is out in the middle of farm country in southwest Iowa. Baseball, basketball, football, golf, and track. But because of his height, he was a basketball star, and that has helped him in the college, in co in the college football ranks because he can bend. He's, he doesn't bend a lot, but he bends enough to get his pad level low enough where his leverage isn't compromised. And as you mentioned, he has almost 35-inch arms, which are very long, and they can keep uh, pass rushers at bay. But here's the thing. This guy makes pancakes every <laughs> Saturday. And Let's go to IHOP. When he moves into the starting lineup, potentially you know, down the line or has to spell somebody for an injury, because this guy is a swing tackle. He's going to compete for the swing tackle job here in Buffalo. He was in a run-first offense at Northern Iowa. Mm -hmm. He pancakes people on almost every play. Now, granted, he's playing at an FCS level. He's not facing giants. He's not facing speed demons off the edge. But this guy finishes people with regularity. He has an edge to him that I like. He knocks guys off the ball and finishes. When he locks on to somebody, he stays attached in the run game, and he's not happy unless that guy ends up on the ground. Um, the problem here is not a lot of pass sets because it's a run-first offense. So he's going to need more reps backing up uh, as opposed to going forward. But this is a swing tackle prospect, Matty, uh, that they really didn't have on the roster. Ty Secchi is in Dallas right now, signed there as a free agent. Yes, they had Ryan Bates, but that's not his primary position, tackle. Uh, so they really needed a swing tackle guy in the pipeline here, and this is a guy who's going to compete to be the third tackle on game days behind the two starters, Deion Dawkins and Daryl Williams. And I think his basketball background helps him. His feet are pretty good. Uh, and for a really, really, really tall player, he's learning in terms of the pass protection. I think the players that are going to give him problems are the kinds of players that give every really tall mm -hmm. tackle problems. Those are guys that can bend around the edge, drop the shoulder, get under his armpit, and, and get inside the reach where he can't get his hands on them, and they slip underneath him. And you got to watch those guys also because they'll step outside, they'll force you to overset, and then they come underneath, and you can't get your hands on them in time and redirect. So those are the challenges for him, but the basketball background and the footwork and agility that he has 
gives him a really good chance to kind of have an upward trajectory in the league. Yeah, I was going to say it seems like this kid has a lot of upside. You and I postponed their 2020 football season, so uh, he wasn't on the field this past season but did start the previous two seasons. So does have a nice body of work, but the upside is there and the value is there at number 93. We've got Fox Sports College analyst and writer for The Athletic, Bruce Feldman, on with us to help us break down Spencer Brown even more. Bruce, thanks for taking the time at, at a close to midnight here on Friday night, but the Buffalo Bills select Spencer Brown with the 93rd overall pick in this NFL draft. What are your thoughts about Spencer Brown, his athleticism, his size that he can offer to an NFL team? Yeah, he was a guy I got on my radar when I do my freaks list every year and some NFL scouts I know mentioned him. He was a 6'8", 215 pounds when the Northern Iowa head coach went to his high school. And the story was just kind of um, very unique about how he came through the recruiting process. I mean, he grew up in a town of about 1,500 on a uh, his family's farm in Southwest Iowa. The mom's a teacher. I think the mom's a principal. And you know, as you, as you guys mentioned, I heard the beginning of it, you know, he was a multi-sport athlete, a really good athlete and had um, the work ethic came of work in the family farm when he was a, a really little kid um, and they were involved in it. And he was good in baseball. He was good in basketball and certainly he was good in football. And um, when they took him, they started to develop and see how much weight he could put on. And the family, you know, would send him a lot of beef that he would eat and, and he kept on getting bigger and bigger and he really took to the weight room. I mean, he is super strong, not just long. And, um, you know, the coaching staff there that I talked to, because I know the, o the O-line coach at UNI had played it at Oregon and I had talked to him and he was um, just this, this kid's work ethic and commitment to it. He could have gone other places when, when FCS football was not coming back last year. And he said, no, I'm not, no one's going to benefit from, from the work ethic and the, and what you and I has done for me, university of Northern Iowa. Um, and that really, I don't want to say it wowed the coaching staff, but, but the head coach said, you know what, we ought to build him a statue outside our dome and put that of him and the quote about how no one's going to reap the benefits of of what they did for me and I thought that was that was one of the cooler things I've heard from a player in you know all the craziness of the pandemic and and everything that was going on with it all I know is that the beef and the quality of it on the family farm must have been outstanding because he put on 90 <laughs> pounds, Bruce. Well, that's great A stuff, man. 90 pounds. I mean, I know he's a big kid, but that's a that's a big transformation in just a couple of years' time, right? Absolutely. And it was basically a hundred pounds from the time they actually saw him and evaluated him. Uh, it's interesting. Like I said, Ryan Clanton his was his position coach, and he was a team captain in those Oregon days. He, he was around uh, Kyle Long, who obviously was in the NFL, back in the NFL. And he said, you know, he he's really, he described him as this self-made freak. Um, and he said he's a really good athlete too, not just, you know, a weight room guy solely. I mean, this is a guy who's running like four nine forties at that. And I, I think it's going to be interesting to see in terms of what I know um, a little bit about, you know, kind of the Bill's culture of what that staff has put together. I think this guy fits it really, really well. It's just, you know, there's going to be a developmental aspect of it, but I could see two or three years uh, down the road, this guy could be a tremendous right tackle for them. Um, and I, I think he's going to fit in really well in Buffalo. All right, Bruce, thank you for taking the time to break down Spencer Brown a little bit more. We've got him standing by, so we're going to hear from him for the first time as a Buffalo Bill. So, Thanks for the time. Enjoy the rest of the night. Get some sleep. We've got day three tomorrow. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, guys. A good day two, night two. We're looking forward to tomorrow. The Bills don't have a fourth round pick. They have two fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. Uh, it all starts tomorrow at noon on NFL Network. And, and Chris and I are going to be here again tomorrow. We're going to be live after some of our picks for some more instant analysis. We'll be hanging. 
so you know where to go. You guys know the drill. It's been two days already, so come back for a third. Make it a whole weekend, why don't you? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to our Bills Draft Special presented by Highmark. We will see everybody tomorrow. Go get some sleep, please.